All right, so the state of Florida got a pretty nasty hurricane over the last couple of days. On Wednesday, this thing made landfall and absolutely obliterated the Fort Myers area. It's terrible, it's sad, and fortunately the track stayed farther south than originally projected. So Orlando did not get hit as bad, but I got so many questions about what do you do with an electric car during a hurricane? And on top of that, all the misinformation out there. So today I'm gonna to hit up every charger that I can in the area just to see how many are functioning right now. There are power outages still in some areas, but we uh, did have a power outage, but the car was already charged up. So I had the car charged at 90%, which it's sitting at right now. So I didn't really have to worry about if the power went out, it was already charged. So now that businesses are starting to open back up here on Friday, Let's find out what the situation is if you do need to get a charge outside of the home. Now there is one other thing to keep in mind and that is the fact that all the gas stations in my area were out of gas as of Tuesday. So some of them actually ran out on Monday but they've been out of gas. So this whole idea that electric cars are terrible in a natural disaster, well before the disaster even happened, you could not fill up your gas car. So you haven't been able to fill up since Tuesday so we'll see if they have gas yet as of today here on Friday, but Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, no gas anywhere in my area. So here we are at the first gas station. There's no regular mid grade or premium and they do have diesel, which is good uh, for the work trucks. All right, pulling into gas station number two here and they are also completely out of gas. All the pumps are turned off. So can't get gas here. All right, pulling into gas station number three. Same situation, no gas. You cannot get gas here. So let's keep looking for some gas. All right, gas station number four. Looks like no gas, none. Still no gas. All right, gas station number five, not even gonna pull in there, no gas. All right, here we come up to public charging station number one. Let's take a look and see if these are functioning. Sorry for the noise, but let's get this thing plugged in and see. It says it's working. Let's find out. So I continue to get an error, so I tried both of these. Neither one of them is working. So that is hit number one for charging all right now we're at my closest supercharger let's see what the situation is here yep start to charge so even though I haven't found a gas station with gas yet, I am able to charge here at the supercharger. And the other thing to note, when you look on your screen, it'll show you the status of all the superchargers in your area. So in the Orlando area, it looks like there's one supercharger that's down. Everything else is online, so I can get a charge anywhere in the city, it looks like. Um, but gas, not so much. And I'm gonna turn around now because as you can see, I don't need a charge. I'm at 86% after driving around a little bit looking at gas stations. So I'm gonna unplug and see if we can find a gas station with gas. So as you could see, the public charger that I tried to plug into did not work. And all that sound in the background was the generator of the library running and it's just not producing enough power for those chargers, or at least it's not prioritizing any power for it, which makes total sense. So don't just count on public charging being available. Now the Tesla supercharging network pulled in clutch, as you could see, almost all those chargers were available. There are only one or two in the city that are offline. So looking like a good situation if you're in a Tesla. If you're not in a Tesla, uh, it's gonna be a little bit more tricky. Now I did find out that the Electrify America charger 
down by i4 and 27 is online so that is working and the whole point of all this is you don't have to have electricity right where you're at you just need to find a place that has electricity so even if one of these fast chargers is not available and it's not anywhere close there are some other things that you can take just like with a gas car you need to do some pre-planning and be prepared for the situation so i'll show you what i have that way you can see if this makes sense for you as well so going into a disaster like this i mean there's a number of adapters you're going to want to have with you obviously you're going to want your j1772 and this will get you level two charging so up to about 30 miles an hour charge with this plug so having that is very important obviously you can opt to get the ccs plug which is 250 dollars from tesla good to have in case there's only like a ccs charger available near you but that is fast charging so that would be good you definitely need to have this with you with or without a natural disaster a 50 foot extension cord always have that in the car now this one is a little bit unique this is what you find at a campground a 30 amp campground plug you cannot just get a standard tt30 to 1450 plug like what you see here it has to be wired specifically because of the grounding so this is specifically wired for evs this is something very good to have. Um, this is actually a really good backup because there's campgrounds all over this country and in certain situations that can come in handy. Now, obviously having your mobile connector ready to go as well as nice, you can have your standard plug in there and I would highly recommend having a 1450, the most common probably plug out there. RVs use this, some of your appliances use this, um, but a really good plug to have for that adapter. Uh, but having all this here, these are all backups. So there's a number of backups. So there you have it. After five gas stations, I stopped filming pulling in because everyone I drove by was either completely wrapped in saran wrap or they had the signs posted or everything was blocked. There's no gas in the city is the point. And it is Friday. So on Tuesday is when gas stations started running out of gas. On Wednesday, you couldn't get gas. So here we are Friday, still no gas. That's four days and you can't get gas but what I can get is electricity in my car. So even if you didn't have a chance to fill up on Tuesday, even Wednesday, uh, here in Orlando, we didn't have power outages right away, so you could still be charging your car and uh, until the power's out. And then once the power comes back on, you can charge it at home like I'm gonna do right now. Just plug it in, not even think about it. So the nice thing about if you have a Tesla as an EV is that on the screen, you can see the status of all these chargers in the city. So you know exactly where you need to go to find a charger that's going to be online should you need it. But if you're like me, you're going to have a full charge when you leave anyways. So this is an extreme example. And this is why I hate when people say crazy things about electric cars and like hurricanes. What are you going to do with your electric car? I've heard it so much this week about electric cars and hurricanes and it's just such an extreme and as a matter of fact when you look at the reality i'm in a much better position than if i was in a gas car so just keep that in mind these extreme examples these what ifs they aren't really relevant for the bulk of the time but when you look at it as a whole it's not the situation that most people are spewing so with that, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, of course, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, of course, subscribe to the channel as we continue to post content regularly. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Tesla. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll catch you next time.